or what I'd like to talk a little bit about is um, polling in the Evo and Delivered.com. I put these on here, and you'll be able to visit them later. Evo is a utility that you can add to a mailing list. And with that empowerment comes the ability for anybody to ask a question and then call for votes. And it's something that really hasn't taken off much as far as our culture because the people that have power don't really like to share. But it's a way to put um, a deliberate democratic layer on groups. And um, it's sort of something I wanted to tickle your fancy with and we can get back to later. But it, I think it's the way of the future. And there's a lot of talk these days about deliberative democracy. You know, should the South Side have a parking resident permit program? Yes or no? Let's get together. Sometimes they do it like you're a jury and they argue the case and then these 12 or 15 or 25 people are going to decide. So sometimes that can be done with a consulting firm or sometimes it can be done raw on the internet with an email application. It gets to be a pretty interesting um, way to keep the democracy going. And it's interactive, and that's one of the key things, that if you can add an element of interactivity to what you're doing, it gets people feeling engaged and empowered. And that's kind of cool, because that's what gets people coming back, and that's what gets people to become the super voters or the super volunteers, is that element of engagement, of one-on-one -on -one engagement. I've been having a lot of fun with TalkShoot recently, and actually it's going on in another meeting room as we speak. But I graduated from Penn Hills in 77, our 30th anniversary is coming up. We had 1,200 people in our graduating class. So I've been pulling together this once a week huddle among our class graduates to see if we should have our reunion, when it should be, what the terms of it. Another, I'm not sure if a candidate wants to go there all the time. You know, I think that could be a sink. There, there might be more prudent ways to spend valuable time. You know, I think groups and candidate helpers need to be there. Well, I think that's the point. The candidate himself should probably not be wasting time on my space. Right. <laughs> there's always a teenager around who's willing to donate some time cruising my space. Right. So that's a great way to put young volunteers to work. So that's why I didn't do it. Technology is constantly evolving, and what's really cool and useful and hot today is going to be old news tomorrow. Um, so you always want to be watching out for the next new thing or the next use of an existing technology. So we did a text the vote campaign earlier this year where we had people register to vote by text message, which also gave them the opportunity um, to, so they would register by text and then the filled out voter registration form would go to their house and all they would have to do is indicate party and sign it and send it in. Pardon now. You want to think about using these technologies in the most creative way possible. So if you're running, without using it, so if you're running a campaign for something and you have phone numbers, you can do a text blast to people to remind them about an action that you're having. Now again, you don't want to send them 20 text messages a day. Some people pay for text messages, but when it's something really important, like demonstration today, rally today, uh, vote today. That's the type of thing where that can be a really effective tool to increase participation by people because they're getting that instant reminder that that's time to do something. Online um, are communities. There are online communities that exist just like your neighborhood community. And they are very, they're very real to the people that are involved in there. You can't just barrel into a community, invade it, and plop your message down and hope that it takes because you're really invading somebody's neighborhood in that way. And if you really want to use the internet effectively, you need to get in there and understand the community. My strong recommendation for interacting with bloggers, for interacting with chat rooms, for online message boards, is just go sit there for a while. Read the blogs for a, a couple of weeks or 
um, you know, however long you can afford to wait, but read them for a while. Go in the chat rooms and just read them for a while. Talk about what people are talking about that has nothing to do with you before you get involved. And it is a time investment, but if you're genuinely involved, then your message is going to be that much more received because you're actually just a participating member of the community. So um, I think there are some really nice chat room tools that could help a great deal. And, and with that comes the, you know, this ability, I think, that she mentioned. You, you just can't post in awkward ways. It has to be on message. It has to be on target. And um, I you know, certainly spam a lot depending on how you talk about it. But I try to figure out what they're talking about and add to the conversation and give it my own little twist or wrinkle. But um, it's, a, it's an important way to, to, to get along in life. It's an important way to get along in, um, on the Internet as well. Just talking about communications best best practices, I have sort of seven rules of communications that I consider to be best practices, which are relevant whether you're doing traditional PR outreach to newspapers or whether you're talk, you know reaching out to bloggers or whether you're um, creating a website. First of all, message matters. Before you start, if you've got a campaign or an organization or a candidate, before you start running out there and telling everybody about what's going on, develop your message so that you can present a message consistently to all of the outlets and throughout the entire campaign. So it should not be something that's undertaken lightly. It should not be something that you throw together in 30 seconds. It should be something you get feedback on and that you put considerable de deliberation into it. Because message matters, and it should be the first thing you do, the platform of everything, the foundation of everything you do. The second thing is presentation matters. Um, in some circumstances, less than others, as a Graham, who's a fantastic, one of our fantastic Pittsburgh bloggers, made the point in the last session that, you know, authenticity is important too. So if you're writing a blog, you know, using um, some less than perfect grammar is, is fine. But when you're putting together materials for your website, you're putting together an email blast, Presentation matters. Nobody is ever going to think you're too polished. Nobody's ever going to say, there's not a single spelling error in this thing. I don't trust this person. They're not real. That's never going to cross anybody's mind. So proofread, proofread, proofread. Look for silly things like font that's a different size. Um, look for inconsistent spacing. Look for that sort of thing. And make sure that when you put out a communications product, that it meets your standard. That if your grammar's not right, it's intentional. That if you're using slang or not, no, uh, or you know, funky punctuation, that you mean to do it. Okay. Um, keep it brief, short, and to the point. Something I'm not doing very, very well right now. But people don't want to read uh, a tome every time you send out an email. Keep it as short as possible. Keep it timely. Interact with the world around you. Engage with what's going on. If there's a news story that happens that's relevant to your candidate or campaign, then you get out a press release that day. Which means that you also need to have somebody empowered to do that. You can't sit around and wait three days for the candidate to wake up and decide to look at the press release. It's got to go that day. Or else you lose the news cycle, which is getting faster and faster all the time. Yes, thank you. What's worse than having no website is having a website that's horribly out of date. So a website that the last time it was updated was like a year ago. So if you're a, if you, you're a candidate or you're an issue-based organization, um, you absolutely have to make sure your website is updated at least once a month. And it can just be changed the front page article. But if you're talking about something, if your website right now has something from like last July, nothing undermines organizational credibility more than that. Because it looks like there's nobody home. Um, and then finally, the last two and most important things, the number one communication gospel, actually aside from message matters, is they can't print or show what you don't say. And they can't print or show what you don't say. <laughs> so if you don't say it, you can't set yourself on fire on the evening news. So in other words, be careful what you say. If you don't stick your foot in the mouth, your mouth, you're not going to be on the evening news sticking your foot in your mouth. So think before you speak or send that email. Um, and secondly, since they can't print or say or show what you don't say, make sure that you get your message out there. That should be the first thing you say. Say your message. Because if you don't say it, it's not getting out there. Okay. That's all I have to say.